you've been pretty like honest about your admiration for new metal, <laughs> which I think <laughs> is really funny and something that like I I don't know like I I I grew up with new metal a little bit. You know, I, I loved that first corn record when I was in oh, middle yeah. school, you know? Oh, yeah. But like, I think for, for me and probably most people, I look back on those bands and I'm like, oh, Jesus, that's awful. Like, why? Like, it seems like just such a weird, like, um, alternate reality of of music. And I guess I'm just curious why you uh, or how you find value in it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it also it it kind of stems back to like this era I'm sort of speaking of of like late 90s when people still bought records the music industry existed mm -hmm. there was radio there was touring there was MTV and so labels like allowed experimentation to happen um in some cases you know you, they created artists like Bjork or Beck, um, who, mm -hmm. you know, they go on to have these huge careers. And then in other cases, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm always fascinated by like, okay, the a and epic met Rage Against the Machine and was like, yeah, do whatever you want. <laughs> it's like, really? Like, just do whatever you want. Same thing with Korn. I feel like those records were in the early stages. I think the intentions behind those records were experimental. And I think they were trying mm -hmm. to create a new sound and to create something that was pushing boundaries. I think once it got like co-opted by some Woodstock 99 culture. <laughs> yeah. When did um, it turn? Cause I, cause I agree with you. Uh, like I, I've listened to back to that, um, that first corn record a couple years ago. And I was like, I can still enjoy this. You yeah. Know? And a lot of it is nostalgia. I can't be totally unbiased. Like, I don't know if I would like it if I heard it for mm -hmm. the first time today you know yeah. but that whole like subsection of music that whole like genre of blending you know rap and rock i guess for to to simplify it it seemed like it it got really fucking cheesy really quick you know yeah and like overnight everyone was just like oh this shit's fucking terrible yeah you know yeah. and um when do you think that changed i think i like to me, when I think of corn or I think of Deftones, I think of like scrappy skateboarder uh, growing up in like rougher neighborhoods, um, part of like metal communities scene of music. And I think there were there was like some industry plants. I think there's those bands did well on their own merit because they created like a movement within their own scenes and then like with any genre i think there was so what are the industry plants like limp biscuit yeah i think like park. limp biscuit probably like lincoln park 100 percent, maybe pod like these things yeah. that were like had radio hits right away was the christian version though yeah that's true that's true i think they were actually like legitimately <laughs> around it doesn't mean that they're good or but or, i think they were around before i think they were legitimately right they were probably escalated though or like yeah actually yeah. yeah probably I mean, I, I think of like um, that first Evanescence single where there's just a guy rapping on it, but like he's not in Evanescence and like, where did he come from? They just threw a guy rapping in it to be like, rap oh, metal, go. Oh man, that that was maybe the emergence of Evanescence was when they jumped the shark or whatever, you know? And, it's and like, don't you think- I like, remember when that came out, I was like, oh God. <laughs> it was just like nails on a chalkboard to me. It's awful. And I also think like, what if they had launched Evanescence with Amy Lee singing, like just her, no rapping on it, just mm -hmm. like a metal band with a girl singer. Right. That, that could have aged that, very well. That could have yeah. aged really well. And been but like what was was the purpose of putting the rapper there because it had to like fit into rap metal yeah. that was popular and like no because they never had another song like that That's what <laughs> to I my knowledge yeah. so i don't know i think there's like when you when things got a little bit commodified for like suburban consumption maybe or mm -hmm. like the hot topics is when i also signed off like i didn't i wasn't on forever um, mm -hmm. but I think like an album like white pony for me is so important because 
you know, just by reading the, like the myth behind the recording process and the compositions of the record, like they were not trying to make a rap metal record. They mm -hmm. were not. And th the timing just made it be that. And the label just pushed it to be that. And my fascination with the Deftones is just because for 20 years, they've been trying to push themselves away from that label. Um, that was never deserved in the first place, really. Right. Uh, yeah. It was just kind of like bad timing for them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like bad timing. Otherwise, you know, could they, could that have been like a metal Pink Floyd record? Like it could have been right. so many things, but instead it was marketed like Eminem, Limpus. I mean, I think mm -hmm. they all had records that same year. So that's, that's what was always fascinating to me. And like, you know, also hearing about the influences behind those artists where like, what influenced them. Um, Korn often influences the, the references like different jazz musicians as influence and really? Deftones is like, you know, predominantly shoegaze or like uh, new wave. And so hearing what they thought they thought they were creating mm -hmm. and then hearing what they did create, I find super, super fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Right. And much of the like cringe worthy aspects of it might be rooted in just how it was marketed for and sure i think in my head when that when all that shit was becoming laughable um in my head i was sort of lumping rage against the machine in with the rest of those you know yeah and uh, i think they did something really smart by like taking a fucking decade-long break you know yeah because had they decided to try to continue to put out records i don't think you people would see it the same way you know i think now people are able to see Rage Against the Machine as a, as a different type of thing and not, not compare them to Limp Biscuit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the time it was, it was part of the same movement. Yeah. But completely. But it, it, not deservingly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So it's yeah. a, I feel like it's a, a dirty word that's like lumped onto a lot of artists, but like really only deservingly on something like Limp Bizkit, where it's yeah. like, where it has you know. no value. <laughs> <laughs>